Hi, I want to let you know where we're at as a congregation. You probably know me. I'm Mike. I'm the pastor here at Shepherd of the Hills. And one of the things that I really want to work to do is make sure that as a congregation, we know where we're at, where everybody is kind of clued in on what's going on. It's something we have to work at. It's easy to miss stuff. It's easy to have stuff get lost in your email or your regular mail or any of those things. So what I want to do is just do these occasionally and let you know what's going on. We had a volunteer thank you breakfast this weekend, and there were some of the high points from that discussion that I just want to share with you. The first thing that I want to let you know is that we are doing well. The congregation is perking along. We have uh, attendance has been in person attendance has been around 224 over the last six or seven weeks. I realized that I had two Sundays that were normal before COVID hit. I was here like six weeks, but one of those was my first Sunday here. One of those was the installation and then something else happened and then COVID hit. And it's like, yeah. So for the average of those two normal weeks, we were at about 280. So 224 to 280, we're getting back where we were. Now, it's important to remember that with everything that has happened since last March, when we hit 280 again, and I'm confident we're going to hit 280 again, it's not going to be the same 280. People floating between congregations, people who were part of things beforehand but are now exclusively doing online, all of this stuff ships around. And in the same way, we have got a lot of new people here from congregations that weren't meeting in any way, shape, or form during COVID, or people who were just looking for something different, or people who haven't been a part of any congregation. There has been a tremendous amount of churn in this time, and it is something that we just have to be aware of. Now, there's different ways that we're dealing with all this stuff. There's different ways that we're handling all these challenges. And the first one that I want to let you know and remind you of is digital is here to stay. For instance, you're watching this via our YouTube channel. Somebody has either sent you this link, you got it through the church email, or something has happened. Or maybe you're not familiar at all Shepherd of the Hills and you just stumbled on this. That's what I mean. Digital is here to stay. I was just talking to a family here uh, this weekend, and they had been watching us online for a year, and this was the first time they had joined us in person. They had some friends who invited them, but they had been checking us out digitally for a year. That is going to be the norm. Back when I was in school, and we'd want to go visit a church, friends of mine and I, we'd go to different churches and check things out. And this was in the 90s. And what we would do is we would call up that church on Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, call them on the landline. For those of you too young to remember landlines, ask your grandparents. We get the church answering machine. And if they didn't have the, the times of the service on Sunday morning, we wouldn't go simply because we didn't have the information. That simple bit of information has expanded a hundred times. People, when they're church shopping, when they're looking for a place to go, will check us out online. They will be looking for our experience. They will be watching sermons and seeing who we are well beyond, well before they set foot on our campus or make any sort of real commitment. Now, what that means is we're going to be updating our website. We're going to be adding new church management software. I know, new software. Everybody gets so just absolutely just bonkers excited over that. But it's something that we need to do. And what that's going to mean is that it's going to improve the volunteer sign up. It's going to improve scheduling experience. It's going to improve all those things so that it makes it easy for you to be part of things. Right now, we've Frankenstein together things between signup genius and signup.com and this ancient church software system that we've got that runs somewhere on Fortran carved into stone tablets. It's an exaggeration, but only a slight one. So what we're doing with that is you'll see more of that this fall, but what it'll do is we'll make it easy for you to be a part of things and not have to go through a bunch of hoops. We all know how it is where you're like, oh, I got to remember to do that. And it's like, oh, by the time you remember to do that and remember the eight steps, you're never in a place 
to do it at the same time you have the time to do it at the same time you remember to do it. We want to make it easy for you. My goal in getting a new church software system is being able to sign up one of my sons for a confirmation retreat and pay for it in three minutes. I think we can do that. So should make life easier for everybody. Certainly will for staff. Now, what I want to let you know is we're doing well. But part of that is making sure that we stay doing well. And one of the things that we're going to roll out this late summer, early fall, is another church health assessment. We have done this in the past. Uh, I've used it myself a number of different times. Uh, Shepherd of the Hills has gone through this process a number of different times. And basically what you do is you look at different areas of the congregation. You say, how are we doing in this? How are we doing in evangelism? How are we doing in our structures? How are we doing in our worship? And then that gives you a chance to focus on one area, whatever needs the most attention right now. And when I was using this back in Toledo, it was really helpful because people would say, hey, I've got a great idea. We should do this. And it usually would be a great idea. But we say, you know, that's a great idea. We need to push that down the road because right now we got to spend the energy on this. Because in Toledo, our congregation was in the bottom 3% of the country for evangelism. You really have to work to be that bad. But we worked on it the other way. We worked on it. The congregation really stepped up, and it was a wonderful experience. And I know Shepherd of the Hills has done that sort of thing five, six times here in the past as part of long-range planning and transitions, and it's really been a success here. And I'm looking forward to rolling that out again. There will be a congregational survey. You can keep your eyes open for that late summer, early fall time frames to be determined. But I'm really excited. about it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, one of the other things that you just want to know is that we are doing well financially. But part of what we need to do is communicate that better. I was talking to some folks who are very plugged in, very part of things. And I said, well, did you get the quarterly giving update? I had these blank stares. And what I said was, is, is we've been doing this thing where we send out with your quarterly giving statement uh, a nice letter saying, hey, this is what we're how we're doing and because you give we've had this many kids in confirmation and and uh, and uh, you know we're able to do these things and we had this many kids do first communion class and all these exciting things and I started asking around and I realized nobody got this because it ended up in people's spam folder or like one person I only found one person who acknowledged they got it and they said yeah I saw I got it so I just put it right in my tax folder I never bothered to read it I'm like so what you're going to get is more communications. It might be more in this form of YouTube and video updates like this. It might be paper letters. We're still evaluating this stuff in the best way, the most responsible way. But what we want to do is let you know how we are doing as a congregation. We want to keep things up to date for you. And we want to make sure that we always focus on giving as a response to God's grace as a response to God's love. We give out of a sense of joy, a sense of investing in the mission of this congregation. We give because God loved us first, and we want to be a part of what he's doing here in Washington County. You've got plenty of places you could spend your money. You've got plenty of places you could spend on yourself. You can go out to eat. There's plenty of things you can buy for yourself, new boats, new toys, whatever you want to do. And there's plenty of worthwhile charities that you can support here in Washington County. The Red Cross, Serenity Inn, all these things do wonderful things here. But we want to be this congregation and this place that focuses on spreading the love of Jesus here in this community. And as part of that, what we want to do is keep you up to date on what we're doing. If you don't know how we're spending the money, you shouldn't give. Just be honest with that. And so we want you to be able to see this, to understand this, understand what's going on. So keep an eye out for future updates. We're doing well. And just to make sure that everybody knows how we're doing well, uh, let me give you some of these updates. These are Mark Nadowski, our treasurer, was kind enough to furnish me the numbers. Just so you know, uh, our total budget this year is 664000 and change. 
And our giving so far this year as of, I think these numbers are from two weeks ago, but roundabout, our giving is up $5,600 or up 2% over last year. We have spent a little more than last year, but some of that is just timing of stuff and we refinanced the mortgage. So there was an extra $35,000 with that and some repairs and some other things that were uh, not in the budget, but had to be done. But we're looking good. And that's the big thing that I want you to know. A lot of people have very much the question of how are we doing? And first of all, I just want you to know we're doing well. We ended last year in the black. We did quite well. We giving a, was above budget for 2020. Excuse me, yeah, 2020, which in the middle of COVID and everything else, I was very pleased by. And this year we're above that. So we have yeah, just let's go to the next page here so I get all the numbers right. To give you an update, our mortgage balance is less than six hundred and sixty-eight thousand dollars. Right now we are about seven years away from paying that uh, off. Mark says seven years or less, and I'm not going to argue with Mark. And uh, what we do is we give about $60,000 and pay down that every year. That's a little above actually what our mortgage payments are, but people give extra, so it goes down faster. So we get that paid off sooner. Right now, we have about $500,000 and change in our savings between the regular budget and the mortgage. And so what that means is we've got a nice cushion. It's, you know, we've always got to have an emergency fund in case anything happens. We've got an emergency fund and plus we can do more in case we run into difficulties, in case we're wanting to invest in future. There are certain projects that we know we're going to want to invest in and it's going to take time to recoup that and it's going to long term it's going to be great but sometimes you have to do an initial payment up front so five hundred thousand dollars plus in savings plus we've also got another thirty two thousand dollars in the samaritan fund which we can give for people in need and additional money in the cookie jar fund which is another fund like that so what this all means is that financially we're doing well the congregation is healthy. We've got some great things on the horizon. We wanted to give you this update, and we're going to keep giving these updates on a regular basis through this and other channels so that you can just find out what's going on. We want you to be aware and be invested in the life of this congregation. Thank you again. We hope you're having a great day, and may God continue to bless you.